In this video, I answer your questions about multiple sclerosis. Don't turn away because that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for families impacted by MS from around the globe. I love answering your YouTube questions, and I had a blast the other day when I did an impromptu live stream Ask Me Anything MS chat. I didn't get to all the questions, and so in this video, I'm going to be answering several of your awesome questions. Let's jump in. Ashild1986 asks, do you still recommend taking the vaccine for COVID when you have MS? Absolutely, 100% yes. I absolutely agree with getting the vaccine. I would get it having MS or not. I've taken the vaccine, my family has taken the vaccine, and I've recommended it to my patients. Yes to the vaccine, get it. Giovanni writes, I need to stop smoking spliffs and use a vaporizer. So I thought this was a really great question. And it's been about a year and a half now that I've been a medical marijuana recommender in the state where I practice in Ohio. And yes, I think that's a really good recommendation. I do not recommend that people get a hold of cannabis, roll it into a joint, light it on fire, and then suck in the smoke. Because sucking in smoke is super pro-inflammatory. It's pro-inflammatory for your lungs, but it's also pro-inflammatory for the rest of your body and your blood vessels in your brain. And it's not a good choice, I don't think. I would much prefer that somebody found an alternative way of consuming cannabis or medical marijuana. Now, using an edible or a tincture is probably the best way of avoiding a pro-inflammatory hit to your lungs. But I do think that a vaporizer is probably better than lighting up a joint or a spliff. And so if you had to pick between a joint or a vaporizer, I'm going to go with vaporizer. Good question. Freedom Wind writes in, I am so glad to hear a suggestion of eating real food. So many doctors do not even care about what you eat. Food is medicine. Increasingly, I feel like diet and nutrition make a massive difference in the lives of people impacted by MS. I want you to up your water game. I want you to supplement low levels of vitamin D. And just like you point out, I want you to eat real food. I strongly recommend that you avoid fast food, fried foods, overly processed foods, sugar-laden foods, and foods with ingredients that you can't pronounce. Those aren't foods, those are chemicals, and I don't think you should eat them. There are a lot of diets out there for MS, but if you can adhere to this simple idea of upping your water game, supplementing vitamin D, and choosing real food to eat, you are way ahead of the game. Dominic asks, is MS related to the angle of the sun, saying, MS probability is lower the closer the equator is. And Dominic, you make a really interesting observation that the farther away we move from the equator, the less sun there is, the less vitamin D we get, and the higher incidence of MS we see in that population. The flip is true. The closer to the equator, the higher amount of sun that people that live there see, the higher level of vitamin D in that population, and the lower level of MS we see in that population as a whole. Now, that data is maybe a little skewed since the advent of the airplane, but we still believe that vitamin D exposure, and maybe to a lesser extent sunlight exposure pre-puberty, plays a role in setting the risk of developing MS. Pedro writes, Hi, Dr. B from Portugal. Well, hey man, how are you? What medicine supplements should anyone with SPMS take to maintain a healthy brain? That's an awesome question. And in fact, we can expand the answer beyond SPMS to people with multiple sclerosis. So I really think that we need to hone in on the basics. We need to up our water game. We need to be drinking a large glass of water with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a glass of water between breakfast and lunch, and between lunch and dinner. And that's a really important place to start from. Second, I want to make sure that we're supplementing low levels of vitamin D. We want to drive our vitamin D 25 OH level above 50, but below 100. And oftentimes we can't do that just by sunning ourselves. We may in fact need to take an oral supplement and then have the doctor check our level. What beyond that? Clean eating. I am way more interested in you cleaning up your diet than I am taking a magical supplement. And if you can focus on eating real food, avoiding fake food, avoiding all fast food and heavily processed foods, sugar-laden foods and fried foods, and foods with ingredients that you can't pronounce, you're gonna be way ahead of the game. 
cleaning up your diet and eating a diet of real food is going to get you much, much farther than any one particular supplement. Now, if I go beyond those recommendations, my next recommendation is oftentimes considering a probiotic and adding fiber into the diet. People with MS have significant issues with gut health. It's very, very common that we're massively constipated or have IBS. And with increased water, by adding fiber and by adding probiotics, we change a lot of things in the bathroom and a lot of things with the gut health that I think is super important. Beyond that, I recommend a multivitamin, one multivitamin a day, just to make sure that you're getting all the vitamins and minerals that you need in case you didn't have that extra salad. Now, I'm not listing out a whole bunch of supplements and vitamins and minerals because I think if you focus on that, Pedro, you are way ahead of the game. If you'd like to learn more about wellness and multiple sclerosis, click the video that's on your screen right now. My name's Aaron Boster, and as always, thank you for learning about MS with me. Until my next video or my next live stream, or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, be safe and take care.